so the next session is presented by Sandro. It's about neuroscience in uh, Fedora. Please go, away, uh, go ahead. Um, let me correct that a little bit. Um, I'm not a neuroscientist. Like uh, many of us are not lawyers, I'm not a neuroscientist. Um, this is a collaborative effort. Uh, the presentation has been put together by Ankur Senior. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. Uh, he is uh, London-based and he was not able to get a visa uh, to leave the island. Um, so I'm doing the presentation. Uh, Lewis uh, um, is a backup as well. Uh, he's in the uh, audience, so uh, you might see his name. Uh, you see his name uh, uh, on the slide as well. Um, indeed, I'm uh, Sandro. Um, let's go. Um, this is a talk primarily about uh, uh, um, use cases uh, uh, of uh, Fedora, and in that uh, particular case, the, the use case of uh, how to uh, uh, use um, Fedora for uh, neuroscience. And that all comes together in the Neuro Fedora uh, Special Interest Group, which uh, uh, maintains a, a whole bunch of uh, packages uh, uh, aimed at uh, uh, neuroscience um, research uh, and uh, development. Um, neuroscience, of course, uh, is about uh, the brain. Um, this is uh, uh, what neuroscience is, uh, primarily focuses on, the, the research uh, um, um, regarding like, how our brain uh, works. Um, this is um, what you see now is uh, uh, um, quite, an, quite an interesting uh, picture. It has a lot of uh, figures. It's, uh, um, it's mind-boggling uh, uh, to think about like, uh, how much is uh, going on in our head. Uh, and um, what we are able to do with it. Um, these slides are from a previous talk in 2019, um, but they are here to remind us uh, of the uh, challenges uh, that uh, neuroscience is, uh, is facing. Um, these are only large brains. Um, we now have a full description of some uh, in vertebrates uh, like, uh, like the sea, uh, elegans and the leech. Neurons are complex um, um, different properties uh, give them different electrophysiological properties. Uh, for example, complex morphologies uh, mean uh, compartment of current different uh, uh, conductances, uh, capacitances, and so on. And that's basically what the research uh, focuses on, the conductivity of these uh, things and uh, stuff, and what to um, derive from that. Uh, passive and active uh, ion channels whose activity can depend uh, on the potential difference uh, across a cell membrane. Inputs at different parts of the tree can cause the neuron to behave differently. Um, more and more information uh, su suggests that the GLR uh, um, support cells play an important role in new, whoa, cannot even pronounce it, neuronal uh, signals uh, and learning. The most recent estimate puts the number of neurons in the human brain at about 86 billion. Um, Neurons in the brain are diverse. You see a few examples here uh, um, of uh, what they look. Um, makes for a nice uh, wallpaper. Uh, put it up in your bedroom. Um, uh, here we see, uh, uh, show different uh, morphologies, uh, but they, are, they also differ by other parameters, uh, protein composition, and so on. Um, uh, thousands of uh, connections between uh, neurons. Uh, um, each neuron uh, connects with thousands of other neurons, uh, forming a massive network. So the brain can be thought of as a massively parallel processor. Um, this is uh, basically... Uh, um, what, uh, what the research is aiming at, what we want to get to know, uh, uh, among other things, is how the brain functions, the physiology, how it is structured, uh, the anatomy, structural connectivity, um, and uh, also the uh, chemical uh, um, um, 
um, compounds that are involved. Um, of course, also how we process uh, information, uh, basically, uh, um, that's this kind of a, a physical uh, computation um, about behaviors and uh, cognition. Um, that's all uh, different areas of research that are going on uh, uh, in neuroscience uh, these days, and it's ever evolving. This is uh, really a fast uh, moving um, 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 field uh, in science. Um, this is, of course, uh, not just to uh, know how it works, but there is also uh, more. We want to, uh, uh, um, uh, neuroscientists want to uh, um, um, see whether they can uh, prevent uh, certain diseases or whether they can treat uh, diseases. Um, and it also serves as uh, brain inspired uh, computing. Uh, say, like, you know, uh, we, we look at nature, we copy it, and we make it better. And, um, in that regard, there's uh, also something to be learned. Um, and, of course, uh, what, what is consciousness? That's another uh, subject. Um, and to take applications uh, from the extreme ends of the spectrum, um, immediate clinical applications, immediate technological applications. These are the uh, two extremes in the, uh, uh, in the research field. Um, we move on to the research pipeline, like uh, basically how is the research done. And the research uh, general workflow uh, can be uh, broken down uh, um, as follows. Um, the four basic categories. Uh, the grand truth comes from observing uh, the brain directly at whatever level uh, of detail is appropriate. Uh, one can look at the synapses uh, and synaptic uh, vesicles, uh, the microstructure of uh, what makes a neuron, the channels, pumps, the um, mitochondria, uh, or whole uh, detailed cell, or just the voltage difference uh, or the current, um, um, or net, uh, a network of neurons uh, uh, firing or at high levels with EEG and MEG and other uh, signals. And uh, one can look at uh, fMRIs, um, all at different levels. Um, all this produces huge amounts of new data, data that must be analyzed. It could be uh, a fancy MI. Uh, and deep learning uh, techniques, uh, standard uh, statistical methods, uh, information theory, uh, and so on. Um, experiments uh, can control, uh, um, can't control uh, for everything, neither can they observe everything. So from the uh, observations and uh, predictions made by experiments, theorists and modelers create models where they explore other parameters uh, to make uh, predictions about them. These models uh, need to be validated against experimental data. Uh, finally, the predictions made by theorists and modelers uh, provide new hypotheses uh, to inform future experiments. Um, uh, let me just move on one slide. Uh, there's uh, more coming in. Um, I might have moved into that already, but um, that's OK. Um, I have, oh, no, not sure where I left it. I had it just. <laughs> Um, it's not uh, quite a cycle, uh, uh, though. Uh, usually uh, we jump from one uh, to another as required. But there's more. There's funding, there's collaboration uh, and project and finance management. There's development of tools, both hardware and software, and chemical and genetic, required to carry out all this work. And finally, the results of research studied uh, must be peer-reviewed and published, and ideally, disseminated uh, uh, to a non-scientific audience uh, um, through uh, uh, sun markers, news, uh, podcasts, uh, blog posts, uh, social media, and uh, whatnot. Labs can be thought of as uh, small-scale uh, non-profit industries. Um, so where does the um, free and open, uh, as we know from the software, come in? Uh, there's a free and open uh, uh, um, uh, science as well. Uh, it applies there and it applies certainly uh, to uh, neuroscience. And 
This, I think, is the, uh, at least for my part, since, uh, as I uh, said at the beginning, I'm not a neuroscience uh, uh, scientist, so I'm uh, um, um, reading here mostly what uh, uh, Ankur would uh, be much more uh, suited to, to explain. But th this analogy, uh, actually, uh, uh, I find uh, quite interesting. Um, free and open science means uh, everyone should have the freedom to share, study, and modify scientific material. And in free and open source software, everyone should have the freedom to share, study, and modify software. Seems to me almost identical. Uh, and this includes all research-related activities, tools, and output, not only source code. Um, and free and open uh, science uh, uh, implicitly uh, includes and relies heavily on free and open source software. These uh, go hand in hand. Um, this is a, a selection of uh, 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 tools uh, that are being used in uh, open uh, neuroscience. Uh, there's a link if you want to uh, uh, look up some more information. Uh, a majority of the tools uh, used now, nowadays uh, um, is free and open source software. Uh, the exceptions... Um, Yeah, uh, the exceptions is uh, uh, usually the hardware uh, that relies uh, uh, on uh, corporate uh, patents and or tools uh, such as uh, uh, um, uh, microscopes uh, which use uh, lasers or lenses which are developed uh, commercially, uh, fMRI uh, machines and so on. So the hardware is not yet open source but uh, most of the software has uh, meanwhile uh, uh, moved on to uh, open source. Um, that brings us to the question, what can we, uh, um, in Fedora, do to help? Um, uh, there's uh, uh, various uh, uh, um, specialties, uh, uh, biologists, mathematicians, physicists, chemists, psychologists. Um, Yeah, um, the, the pay in software development in industry uh, is higher in general than in academia. Um, also, career paths for software developers in ac uh, uh, academia uh, is, not, is not clear. Um, a small proportion of uh, trained uh, software developers works in academia. Um, it's a limited uh, uh, time, uh, uh, they have limited time, limited funding, limited resources. Uh, they do it because uh, they love what they do. Um, sounds pretty similar to what we do in Fedora. Um, the code quality is uh, usually uh, limited as well, because it uh, usually starts out as a hobby uh, project and then uh, evolves into something, uh, uh, something larger. Um, Therefore, the best practices are not always uh, well implemented. Um, testing is not always uh, carried out uh, um, thoroughly. Um, maintenance uh, can be uh, flaky. Uh, depends on the uh, type of software. Uh, sometimes people lose interest and then the uh, software uh, decays uh, slowly and uh, stops working eventually. Um, uh, there's usually complex uh, dependency chains, uh, the software depends on a lot of other software and uh, then the, uh, the, uh, the cycle uh, basically starts again if one of these components uh, uh, is not uh, being maintained, uh, this could uh, uh, um, be a problem for uh, some other software uh, which uh, stops uh, functioning uh, correctly or functioning at all. Uh, documentation and support is not always uh, uh, um, up to the standards uh, where uh, people would like it. Um, and, um, and there's a, a lack of uh, uh, know-how in uh, how, to, um, how to develop uh, uh, software. Um, uh, this implies, and this is based on uh, anecdotal uh, evidence, that the software used in research is not the best quality. This comes from uh, Anku, uh, who uh, has, exp uh, um, has experienced that uh, himself in his uh, research. Um, this uh, means uh, there is a waste uh, of uh, uh, time and effort. Uh, um, um, software is not always up to date. You know, some of that is still running on Python 2. Um, I do I dare say, do we have that in Fedora? Yes, we do. Um, I won't name it, but uh, most of our most of you are uh, using uh, um, are still in 
touch encountering uh, Python 2 uh, software. Um, if you picked up your badge today, then you uh, made use of uh, some Python 2 uh, software. Um, Uh, developers in the, uh, in the academia, the scientists, are not always aware of uh, uh, helpful uh, development tools, so they, uh, use, uh, they, they tend not to use them. Uh, they rarely run uh, test suits at all. It's actually been improved. Uh, uh, I see a lot more packages in the uh, Neuro Fedora um, ecosystem that has uh, um, extensive uh, testing, and it sometimes uh, takes uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a while to run. Um, bugs are not always reported, uh, and um, patches are not always uh, uh, supplied upstream. And if correctness of a tool uh, cannot be verified, uh, how can the correctness of the scientific result be uh, claimed? So that poses a problem uh, for, the, for, the, for the scientists and for the research, because you need to be sure that uh, what you are presenting in your paper is actually uh, correct and that people can uh, reproduce it and verify it. Um, so what, what we do uh, as the uh, um, NeuroFedora uh, SIG, uh, we, uh, we liaison with upstream and with the users. Uh, we do that already. Uh, we try to follow best practices in uh, software development. Um, uh, for example, the tools used uh, to, to build certain packages. Sometimes it's just a, a string of uh, scripts uh, that does something, but that doesn't work in Fedora, so we need to uh, step in there and uh, um, make it work uh, for our built uh, system so that it can be uh, um, employed in, um, in Fedora. Well, in Fedora, we have the infrastructure uh, to do that. That's, uh, 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 that's a pro, certainly. Um, we work to grow the community. We try to get uh, people who uh, would like to uh, pick up uh, packaging in Fedora, uh, um, have them st uh, start with a simple uh, Python uh, package. Uh, that's how I made my way into uh, packaging by uh, packaging uh, um, some software that was on the list of the um, Neuro Fedora um, um, Pager uh, instance um, needed to, uh, that needed to be packed uh, for Fedora. Package for Fedora. Um, I did that, and um, actually, uh, I had the experience immediately that uh, that one piece of software that I volunteered to uh, package for Fedora uh, that had uh, a stack of dependencies, not that big, but I think it was uh, four or five other packages that needed packaging before I actually could that get that package into Fedora. And they were not all that easy, uh, but you know, you you learn. Uh, you live and learn, and uh, finally we got that in, and now that tool is uh, um, available in uh, Fedora, and thereby uh, available to the neuroscientists uh, uh, around the world. Um, we learn from each other, uh, as I did, and I hope others will, um, uh, that uh, um, volunteer to, uh, to, jo uh, to join uh, Fedora, and especially in that case, then the Neuro Fedora uh, community. And, um, and we try to provide information um, to the end users uh, uh, about the software. And sometimes we even provide uh, documentation and uh, deliver that back uh, uh, upstream. Um, the primary goal uh, of the Neuro Fedora SIG is to uh, provide a ready to use integrated force platform for neuroscientists. Um, there is a spin that you can uh, um, pull from the website that has all the uh, uh, um, NeuroSig uh, packages um, um, in there. And if you install that, then you have the uh, um, entire uh, collection of uh, uh, software uh, um, that we have packaged for Fedora uh, available at your fingertips. That is uh, uh, the best way uh, to get uh, researchers uh, started. They don't have to look around, they don't have to uh, run the pip install and then wonder why uh, uh, this one package uh, actually doesn't install. We have solved that for, for them and you, it's, it's, in the, uh, it's in Fedora. Uh, you can grab that, install it, and uh, run all uh, and use uh, all the software that is in there, whatever you need. Um, the secondary uh, goals are um, also, the, uh, uh, the, to improve the software standard uh, and, uh, and the maintenance of the tools uh, being used, uh, we help users uh, uh, develop software, and, uh, and while doing so, you also uh, improve your own uh, development skills. 
uh, and we try to make uh, neuroscience accessible uh, even to uh, non-specialists. Um, well, me included. I'm, I'm not a scientist. Uh, I keep repeating that, but uh, um, the science is underlying. I uh, know, uh, I have a grasp of what the tools are being used for, even though I'm not involved in uh, using them, but uh, um, it's, uh, it's complex at times. Um, and of course, we want to make uh, Fedora the go-to uh, distribution for neuroscience. Uh, and uh, any help uh, in that is um, um, appreciated. So if you, uh, if you want to join, um, there will be a link on the, on the last slide. Um, um, yeah, it's, that's what we also do. Uh, uh, um, we, we are building basically on what is already in Fedora, like all the, uh, um, the um, tooling needed for um, providing the software, like uh, some packages are just uh, uh, pure Python, others are uh, um, a mixture um, um, of C and Python, and there's other, uh, other stuff there as well. But we can usually leverage on what uh, has already been uh, packaged uh, for Fedora and which is already up to a, a, um, um, to a high standard, which makes uh, our work easier. Um, so we, we, we basically uh, built on the community as well. Um, and uh, that basically uh, um, is just one step uh, short of uh, taking the entire uh, um, FOSS model and applying that to uh, neuroscience uh, research. Be open, uh, be transparent, and uh, uh, let people know uh, uh, what's, what's in the box. It's, it's not hidden, it's up to you. You can look into it, you can modify it, you can improve it, um, and you can base your own uh, uh, development work uh, on it. And then make it available again, uh, available again to, um, to other uh, researchers, researchers or software developers. Um, it's almost uh, five years old now, the special interest group. Uh, that's how long it exists. Um, um, <clears throat> yeah, we have um, about 40 contributors. Um, the, the number of package uh, maintainers has uh, Im Im improved uh, quite a bit. Um, we started out with uh, just about uh, 10 a few years ago, and now we are uh, 27 package uh, maintainers. Um, we also have uh, um, uh, newcomers uh, from other sections, the uh, outreach uh, and so on. Um, and there's only a few people uh, from the, uh, that ha really have a neuroscience background. So uh, you do not have to be a neuroscientist uh, to join the, uh, um, the community and help out. There's a lot of uh, uh, tasks uh, also for people who just want to uh, get themselves familiarized with uh, packaging or maybe who want to uh, um, improve their skills in uh, development. Uh, Python uh, is, I think, the, 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 by far the largest uh, uh, um, programming language being used in, uh, in that software. Um, so if you have an affinity with uh, Python, uh, then uh, you should definitely look into uh, Neuro Fedora. There's a lot of uh, Python work uh, waiting for you. Uh, we have uh, uh, about 266 packages uh, ready to install. Uh, uh, that was uh, only 150 a while ago. And there is, uh, um, the, the queue is ever growing. And of course, uh, people uh, uh, choose what they feel uh, comfortable with uh, in uh, packaging. Some packages uh, we also discover uh, along the way that you encounter dependencies which are patent uh, encumbered uh, and therefore um, uh, that's where it stops. That's where we cannot uh, put it into Fedora uh, unless there's an uh, option to uh, leave certain uh, parts out. Um, there was the... Um, um, need to uh, scratch my head, there was, uh, um, what's it called, F Flare? No, 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 it's a, it's, a, it's a big Python tool that uses the uh, GPUs for uh, computation and whatnot, and there's an effort uh, now uh, to get that into uh, Fedora somehow. Well, that has been, uh, um, um, I forgot the name. Uh, that has been a big blocker for uh, quite a few packages where that uh, tool uh, has been, uh, where that is a dependency uh, for the software. But so if, if that makes its way into Fedora, then we have a, a whole new uh, um, list of packages. Hmm? No, no, no. It's, um, <clears throat> I think it's... Uh, uh, 
Um, hmm? It's it's something like flare or flash. Uh, it has something. It has something. Uh, I'll, I'll look it up. Uh, hit me up, and uh, I'll have it looked up because there was a big discussion on Discourse uh, recently, and uh, people immediately jumped in there. Oh, well, you can't package that because it needs the proprietary uh, GPU drivers and whatnot, and it's a Python piece of software, but it uh, uses. Uh, uh, it uses these uh, drivers to uh, speed up computation. If you don't have it, then it's so darn slow that it's not usable. So, uh, but there's apparently now an, uh, an effort uh, to see what, uh, what, what can be done. And uh, if it gets done, then uh, uh, that will help us a lot. So we, uh, uh, we are building uh, um, on that uh, effort. And we might even uh, contribute to that effort uh, uh, if, we, um, if we feel like we have something to contribute. Um, yeah, we, uh, we keep packaging, that's what we mainly do. Uh, we maintain the software, new updates uh, means we need to update uh, um, if there's, uh, like recently, Python 3.12 uh, uh, hit uh, raw height. That meant uh, a whole uh, myriad of uh, uh, um, bug reports uh, for packages that were no longer able to install. And uh, here you see again that the developers are not always uh, uh, following best practices, because some of the uh, uh, stuff that happened in Python in the latest Python release or pre-release, it's not even out yet. Uh, things that were deprecated for several releases have now finally been removed. Um, software developers have been warned about it. If you look through the output, there is a lot of warning in it. This is deprecated. It will, re it will be removed eventually. Developers didn't care about it, uh, and now it hits them. Uh, now they need to uh, uh, change their code to make it compatible with the, new, uh, with the newest Python version. Well, you could have seen that a long way uh, coming, but uh, okay, that's uh, where we step in. We uh, provide patches upstream. And if you cannot uh, provide the patches ourselves, then we at least uh, leave uh, a bug report upstream informing them that uh, the software as is is not compatible with the latest uh, Python release, which will be part of uh, Fedora uh, 39. So if they do not get around to fixing that, uh, then that means we need to drop that package uh, from Fedora, at least temporarily, until they have fixed it. Um, and this is the interaction uh, uh, where we uh, can contribute uh, to the neuroscience uh, software development uh, from our perspective of, of uh, Fedora being uh, bleeding edge. Uh, you know, we have Python 3.12 uh, integrated already, whereas uh, Python uh, uh, itself, the, the, the organization, has not even released it yet. It's a, it's a pre-release. And that uh, tends to uh, um, produce uh, mixed reactions. Uh, some developers are quick to uh, um, provide uh, fixes, which we can then uh, apply as patches. Others are more like, well, Python 3.12, uh, uh, that's too new for me. It's not even out yet. I'm not going to look at it. I'll look at it later. So then we are stuck. And, uh, or we can, uh, um, um, if we do understand what's the uh, problem exactly, we can try to look into it and um, 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 provide patches uh, upstream, say like, you know, if, we, uh, if you change that, that makes it compatible with Python 3.12 and it stays compatible uh, with uh, 3.11 as well, so uh, backwards compatible and uh, everyone has helped, uh, um, people can uh, keep using uh, that software. Um, so we, we contribute to upstream uh, quite a bit. Um, Yeah, we, uh, um, that's from the uh, scientist perspective. Uh, uh, researchers are uh, encouraged to uh, um, contribute to a FOSS, uh, make the software open source, uh, adhere to the standards. Uh, um, um, and uh, we encourage people to uh, interact uh, with each other uh, more to make, uh, uh, make better software, make the, uh, the final product uh, um, more suitable uh, for everyone. Um, that's what we are continuously uh, working on, so that's uh, also, uh, that's why it's headed under future plans. Um, basically anything. It's just, uh, uh, it's just more of the everyday life of a package and Fedora is. Uh, it's packaging, testing, containers, documentation, evangelism, marketing, design. Uh, so all these aspects uh, come to, uh, come to um, 
come back in the uh, um, in what we do in the uh, Neuro Fedora um, um, interest group, um, and that's where we are looking for help uh, constantly. So if you feel like you have to spare a few cycles or you would like to uh, uh, contribute uh, uh, um, to certain uh, uh, software and um, help out, uh, you're welcome. You, uh, you can uh, um, contact us, uh, get in touch with us, um, and you find all the information on uh, neuro.fedoraproject.org. Um, we have a mailing list. Uh, as well. We are on IRC slash matrix. Uh, um, it's near Fedora. Um, I forgot the name. I have, it, I have it there, but you can look it up. It's all on the site. Um, the activities are in uh, Pager as a project uh, of the special interest group. There you have uh, bug trackers for uh, um, software that we uh, would like to have uh, packaged, issues uh, that might have come up, uh, things that need to be discussed. Uh, if you feel something there, something else I could uh, uh, help out here, um, you can just uh, uh, drop a line in the, in the ticket and uh, um, someone uh, will add you to the special interest group and you can work on the ticket and uh, your help will be uh, greatly uh, appreciated. Uh, you can find us basically uh, anywhere. Um, that's about it. Questions? Thank you. Um, really interesting project, and I have like six or seven questions, but I'm gonna only ask a couple. Uh, let's start with one. Yeah, let's start. Let's start with one. Um, so I guess my first question is: You said you have just a few contributors that are like really neuroscience researchers, um, and I assume many other people might have come through Outreachy or maybe RSE or other disciplines. Um, in terms of like the rest of the community, maybe not people like maintaining packages and stuff, uh, what portion of that, like how, how prevalent is NeuroFedora among neuroscience researchers as something that they use? I know many people use Fedora spins quite actively, myself included, but don't really actively contribute. So I'm, I'm curious your perspective there. Um... Personally, I don't have that information uh, available. Um, I know that uh, Ankur is uh, very uh, uh, engaged in the project. He is a neuroscientist. Uh, um, um, he would probably be able to uh, answer that question, but he is uh, putting a lot of effort in there to, to make it known to other, uh, to fellow researchers, uh, fellow scientists, uh, uh, and uh, that the spin is available. And if you need uh, software tooling for your work, to get you started quickly, uh, grab the spin, install it, and you have uh, all these packages uh, at your fingertips. Uh, nothing else you need to do, you can just use it. But how many? Uh, that is a question I would need to relay to Ankur. Uh, so like a non-answer of sorts would be, I, I used to work in a, uh, as a postdoc in a lab that was using Fedora for neuroscience. And unless you were involved in close cooperation with the lab, there is no way you could have told this from the outside because it's not like, you know, you're advertising articles that you are using this operating system or that operating system. So I think that in general, there's nobody who has any idea on a wider scale about different labs and different groups and, and so on. Okay, any more questions? This is a question that came in from the, the chat room that I am relaying. Uh, so there's a question about whether in the space there's any open source alternatives for diagnostic tests used around ADHD, autism, or other similar software in the Nero Fedora software stack. Uh, person was curious about, because there's usually closed source software used in this, and they were just wondering, I guess, if there was any open source software in in this space, or if the NeuroSig neuro is covering things like that? Um, I'm inclined to say that uh, uh, since uh, um, the uh, ADHD, uh, uh, that is uh, um, a certain 
defect in the uh, in the way the the brain works. Uh, um, maybe that's not the right term uh, um, that a, a scientist would use. Um, there's certainly tools for um, um, analysis of uh, certain uh, data and maybe for um, 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 producing uh, uh, um, uh, charts or uh, images, presentations and stuff like that, but uh, specifically for the research of these uh, uh, um, 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 defects, um, I'm not aware, but uh, that's probably more because I'm not the actual scientist. Uh, that's uh, unfortunately another question um, I would have to relay to Ankur. I wish he were here, but uh, unfortunately he's not. But uh, feel free to uh, uh, post these questions in the, uh, in the chat room. Uh, um, Ankur is very uh, active there and he's probably able to uh, point you to some links. And you might even find uh, some links on the, uh, on the website that is uh, up on the screen. That has uh, links to other stuff as well, so there might be something in there already. I'll just note he is in the flock chat right now answering some of these questions. So if you are looking Excellent. for those answers, I, I just jump have, into Matrix. I wouldn't have expected any differently. <laughs> so six more questions. <laughs> Yes, Let's take uh, number, number, question number seven, please. Number seven? Okay. Well, I actually, I, I thought of six more during the last question, so that we're only halfway through now. Um, so I, I work for a university, which is why uh, a lot of this is really interesting to me. You know, I work for a university open source programs office. Um, my question for you with the Neuro Fedora project, uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's quite, like, it's obviously a very useful um, software stack for an entire discipline. And certainly from my perspective, there's many organizations advocating for using more open source technology, having more unified software stacks for specific disciplines. Um, and we work, you know, whether they're nonprofit foundations that provide funding for this, or um, in the US, a lot of government agencies are now really interested in seeing this sort of work, like the NSF and Year of Open Science and stuff like that. Uh, my question for the Neuro Fedora project and you know folks involved in that is uh, do you have like maintainers or community members that are working with these organizations? Is this something that you think the community, I know it's just a special interest group and it's like just a spin, so it's not like you guys have your own foundation or whatever, but is this something like interacting with these organizations? Is something your community is interested in doing, seeking funding and hiring people? Well, uh, I think it happens uh, uh, indirectly because a lot of the software that we package for Fedora is written by uh, scientists uh, themselves. So these are researchers that uh, write uh, tools they need to uh, um, do their work. Uh, we package these tools uh, for Fedora and while we do so and while they're developing, we interact with them so there is the, uh, um, the exchange of information and uh, helping each other out in making better, uh, better software and uh, um, contributing back um, to, to the software that is used by other neuroscience. Uh, in the special interest group itself, um, I don't think we have, uh, at least I'm not aware of uh, uh, um, any members that are actively uh, involved uh, in software development, uh, especially for neuroscience. Maybe Ankur is, but I'm not sure, and there might, there might be a few, but that I'm just not aware of. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Okay, thank you for the presentation. You're welcome. You're welcome.